Hey guys, Jimbo here. We're at the BRT, Angela and I, and we are getting ready to do the Buffalo River Trail through the hike. Should be about 37 plus two miles, so about 39 total. Uh, Pruitt's closed, so we're gonna walk past Ozark where we parked and go all the way to Pruitt and back. So about 39 miles. All right, it's October 15th, 2020. It is Thursday. And it is 4.35 p.m. and we are officially on the trail. Next stop, Smith Creek, which Angela seems to think is dry, I hope, since I put my boots on nice and tight and I'm ready to go. So we'll see what's going on. We're kind of in a hurry because since it's after 4.30, um, we only have two hours to get where we need to go. We're uh, gonna camp at mile 3.6, there's a really, beautiful camp spot that we saw last time and uh ever since that last time we didn't we missed it by half a mile we've been talking about wanting to camp there so tonight's gonna be the night and uh we've got about at, a, at this point we've probably got about two hours worth of daylight but i don't think it's gonna take us two hours to do three and a half miles even though it's some of its hills so we will see Right off the bat, we're subjected to a, an uphill climb. We're about a half mile in, a little over. I already worked out of my long sleeve. The temperature dropped. It's chillier than it was supposed to be, but when you're moving, it doesn't feel chilly. It actually feels pretty good. After we got to about a half mile, we kind of crested the top and the way got a little easier. It's a little flatter. Still got a little up and down, but nothing strenuous. Following a, a cool, what looks like a runoff of some sort, real rocky runoff, kind of skirting the edge of it. Oh, well, looks like we're gonna cross it actually. The leaves make it interesting. Uh, we were here in springtime and the trail was well defined and a little overgrown but now it's uh, the leaves are kind of all over and you got to pay attention to where you're walking because there's sticks and rocks and because you can easily get off track if you happen upon a green trail or something on accident looks like the fence is taking some damage since we're here Kind of a bummer. It wasn't like that when we came through in March or whenever it was. I was just telling Angela that I really don't recognize most of this. Um, it was really overgrown when we came through and it's obviously been maintained since then because there's about a three or four foot path here that's been trimmed. It's pretty nice. About 520. We're getting it. We got about 1.8 miles in. We took a couple small breaks. Angela needed to make an equipment equipment adjustment on her socks, and uh, took advantage of it. Took a couple breaks. Really, we're not in any big hurry. As long as we get there around dark, before dark would be nice. But we're not sweating it. We've been on this trail, so we know what to expect, and we're not in too big a hurry. All we got to do is get to camp, eat, drink, and be merry, crawl in our hammock, and we're good. One of the many views we should get. Man, pretty awesome stuff. Big old deep valleys, high ridges, bluffs over there. Pretty cool stuff. So it's 5.35, we got about two miles in and we are coming to the road. This is one of my least favorite, 
just because it's a road, and I think most people will agree that roads for hiking are kind of lame. And uh, I don't know if you saw the first video or not, but on the first video, a big dumpster truck come rolling through, and there was just barely enough room for the, us on the edge and him to drive through. But we all made it. If memory serves, right up here somewhere we saw some water, a water drainage going from right to left in the way that I'm facing. And we gathered a bunch of water because we were out of water. Yep. All right, I think we're coming up to the point where we get off this darn road. Sure enough, we had two cars go by, trucks. So we got dusted again. I don't know, both times we've been on this one, we got dusted by vehicles, so. Uh, one more reason why I really don't care for roads. Unless I'm driving, of course. All right, this is our turn. Cool, we got about a mile left to go till we hit camp, so I think we're in pretty good shape. So that's the campsite from the first time we were here. We're a little bit in a hurry, so I don't want to stop and revisit it, but yep, we totally stayed right here. Had we known we only had to walk another quarter mile to the good spot, we would have. But now we know, and that's why we're staying at a better spot. All right, well, our campsite is right up there. This last time was a water crossing. As you can see, it's got very little water. There's a little bit of a pool over there. We got enough to do what we got to do, but it is not really a crossing, so. It's yep, it's gorgeous and we will survive the night. We're gonna get up there and make camp and I think it's okay to make a fire, don't you? I do. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get some wood and make a fire. Okay, so this is our spot for the night. Uh, someone graciously left us some sticks, so kindling sticks, so I'm going to try to find some a little bit bigger stuff. I thought I saw some down here that we can burn in half maybe. Right here, there's a, another spot right over there I'll steal the wood from. So, uh, um, can you shine your light over there? There's Angela's hammock and tarp, and then mine's right here. It's kind of hard to see. Do you have do you have a time, babe? I can tell you. We got tarp mod going on, and 720. Looks like she's got her tarp mod. It's 720. We're at mile 3.6 on the gut hook app. Uh, this is one of our favorite spots. The last time, like I said earlier, we saw it and we missed it by about a quarter mile. And then when we saw it, we were really kicking ourselves in the ass. But I, I brought a little dryer lint to get a fire going, thanks to Seth. Uh, Cat I group hiked with two weeks ago. Seth, man, thanks for the, the tip. I'd actually heard about it a long time ago from my dad, but I'd forgotten about it, and it worked like a charm. Luckily, some the last campers were cool and left us some tindling, so, kindling, so all I had to do is go get a kindling. couple of big sticks, and uh, we're good to go. Angela's getting her wine on. I got some, We got some cheese and meat, <laughs> so we're going to sit here and chill. It was a great night. We had a good hike. Um, the first uphill was a little strenuous, but after that, everything evened off. And uh, we got here in good time and we got everything set up. We're, uh, we ate sandwiches on the way here, so we're really not very hungry. So we're just gonna kind of snack on some cheese and meat and definitely get our wine on. So we're just sitting here talking shit about everybody we know, <laughs> just drinking wine and watching this beautiful fire. The smoke snake. Do you see it? I do, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, you guys are drunk. <laughs> 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 Which, actually, we're not. <laughs> smoke snake. Yep, there it goes. That's awesome. Do you guys see the smoke snake? It was like a stream. 
Okay, so it's <laughs> 20 to 11, and we're still going strong. And I don't know if we're going strong. I don't know but... if we're going strong, <laughs> but <laughs> the fire is still lit, and uh, we're about done. So um, yeah. you guys are going to probably get, oh, oh. Sorry, yeah, there we go. So you guys will probably catch us in the morning. And um, I just want to tell you that we don't condone drinking while you're hiking. <laughs> <laughs> so don't do it. Don't do it. All right. It's Friday morning. Angela's getting her gear going. Packing up. I've got most of mine done. A little bit of a gear explosion. Uh, we already ate. Both had oatmeal. I'm still drinking coffee, and it looks like she's finished her coffee. It's 34 degrees when we woke up this morning, which is pretty chilly. Colder than our gear is rated for. It's went up almost a degree. It's almost 35. Balmy. A balmy 35 degrees. And Angela got out of the hammock and got her fire going before I crawled out, which is pretty nice of her. And we're just waiting to be brave enough to handle the cold weather. So we'll get back with you. Right, there goes our camp. It's 9.32 and we're on track. It's a little later than we originally planned. Our original schedule for takeoff was the ass crack of dawn, I believe is what Angela said, but that didn't work out. It was too cold. Uh, it was about 40 degrees. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes ago, so it's warming up pretty quick. So we're on our way. Next stop should be, uh, or next campsite should be right around Steel Creek. Taking a quick breather, and we just climbed up pretty good elevation, uh, a bunch of stone rock stairway. Angela started getting hot and finally worked her way out of that fleece. We're taking a quick break to do that, and then we're gonna be on our way up. I, I believe if, if we remember correctly, right after this area, it turns into like a big flat. Um, in the springtime, it was kind of a marshy area, a lot of bugs, and that'll be a better trip this time because I don't think that there's gonna be many bugs. Um, we'll see. I remember it being a couple miles long, and then at the end of it, I think it pays off at the Dry Creek, I believe it is, I'm not sure. We'll see, we're still going. It's 44 degrees, almost 45 degrees, and uh, we're back on the trail in a matter of minutes. We are one mile in on day two, approximately four and a half total. Um, this was a really swampy, semi-muddy area, this trail, whenever we came through it. I think it was in March, I'll just call it springtime. And so far today, it's been really nice. We, we crossed one little section that looks like a, a ground seepage that was muddy, that had some small diameter logs going across it. and. It was really easy, no problem whatsoever. And uh, so far we haven't been hit with any bugs. And uh, I've only got, I've only found a couple of spider webs and I think they're actually from probably last night because I don't think the spiders are out right now. It's about 11 a.m. now. We've gone about um, two and a half miles. We're at mile marker six, or we were. We stopped and had a small brunch, about a 15 minute break. We both got a cliff bar and hydrated up and we're back on the trail now. We're trying to make it to a creek. I think it's called Dry Creek, but we're not really sure. Cause it's a creek area where you cross past um, private property and it's really, really pretty. So we're, we're hoping that we get there and have a hunger so we can eat lunch there. Cause it'd be a great place to eat lunch. It's, it's really, really beautiful. You guys are gonna like this. It's in the original video. We kind of call it an oasis because we were really needing water when we pulled in there and it was just a good break spot and lots of water and super beautiful. So that's where we're standing right now. Other than that, nothing really to report. We did see some kind of wild scat on the trail. And I wasn't sure what it was. It didn't look like bear. Um, and it certainly wasn't deer or elk. So uh, we're leaning towards 
Angela thinks it's a big cat. Um, I don't disagree, but I'll, I'm also not ruling out maybe a, a large dog of some sort. It was a pretty sizable piece of a uh, pile, I should say, of cat. So, I don't know. I haven't seen a whole lot of wildlife, really. Yesterday, when we went by that little pond, we saw two ducks and then uh, a very small deer uh, getting a drink. So, other than that, no wildlife, really, to speak of. And uh, so far, the trail's been really good to us. We're going to keep on keeping on. So we just passed our first hiker. I was starting to wonder when we'd see someone. Um, surely we'll see someone around Ponca and still creep on. But uh, yeah, it's a lone hiker and he was stopped shedding clothes and we kind of got a giggle because we had just got done taking, or I, I should say I, I was just, just took my long sleeve shirt off. So it's definitely starting to get warmer now. We're up on a ridge line now. We're starting to get a little bit of views. Pretty cool. Won't be long and it'll be lunchtime and we'll be sitting at a, a beautiful little creek. Check out this, I remember this from last time. This tree grew through the rock and when it finally fell, it broke the rock all up. Pretty cool. Nature's a, a crazy thing. We just rolled past three miles and I feel like we're trucking on pretty good. We got a little bit of a slow start because of, it was cold, so we have got a late start, I should say, but then right out of camp, it was a little bit of an uphill slog, so we didn't get our pace going until much after, but uh, I feel like we're doing really good. Both of us are feeling good and uh, we're tackling it. It's the only way to do it. How are you feeling? What do you think so far after three miles? Um, I mean, I feel like it's very doable for us to get 12 done today. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> we only need 10 I mean, and a half, though. I it's only been three miles, so it's possible that we'll feel differently after we go up that big hill, but... Okay, well, I might have to scrub this if, if we're wrong. <laughs> We've been following this... Um, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a, I guess, a ridge line or whatever, but we're slowly going downhill. We've been going downhill for probably 10 minutes. Pretty mellow downhill. It's a uh, small rock, so it's pretty good footing. A lot of leaves, which so it's nice that it's small rocks. And uh, just pretty much dirt and rock. And uh, we're slowly making our way to, I guess, the bottom. Everything's going pretty smooth so far. Probably knock on wood. Big tree down. Really stoked with our progress so far. Neither one of us has had any complaints whatsoever. And that always makes for a good trail. Good hike. A little cut back here. Uh, here's that tree that you've been looking for. Yeah, we remember this tree. Angela's short, so she does not like this style. <laughs> I mean, I'm tall and I'm going to have a good time getting over it. Angela's going to show you how to go over a a crazy tree. When you're a stocky Sicilian <laughs> lady with short legs. Oh God, it's pretty slippery. <laughs> you just have to like throw your body weight over and commit to it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, it I mean, it's really slippery. Oh, I know. <laughs> right there. Okay. Cool. Yep. So we're coming up to another one of those trees that Angela likes so much. And the trail is even narrower now, so it's going to be really fun. And it looks like this one doesn't even have bark, so we thought the other... This one you might be able to get over, though, easier. Nah. Okay, so we're getting ready to get, come 
onto some private property here. It only happens for a second and then we'll end up down there at the really cool spot. And we're not really sure if it's even late enough to eat, to be honest with you, but we'll see. Definitely gonna take a nice break. There's an old barn or a house or something up there. Pretty cool. Yeah, this spot down here, it's, it's freaking awesome. I don't know if I said it before, but this, this is a really neat area. <laughs> it's called Dry Creek. I'm not quite there yet, but just the whole coming down into it is... Yeah, it's got water. Awesome. Yeah, this place is great. Everything about this place is a win. Not nearly as much as it did in March. Looks like we'll be able to get across without water shoes. Dude, I got a walking stick on me. Sorry about that. I had a walking stick on me and it freaked me out for a second. I got freaked. There's a lot, a lot more beautiful whenever it was full of water, but I'm gonna take it as a win. And I see a break spot right here. I'm gonna pull my chair out. I'm gonna take the old shoes off for a little while. And I'm gonna chill out. It's got really cool shaped wings. Uh -huh. So we stopped for about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, and pulled out our chairs and took a break. Originally we were gonna eat lunch, but then we really weren't hungry enough for lunch. So we just took a break and took our feet, our shoes off. Got a little bit of a, a foot break there. It's a cool tree. And uh, in a half mile, we just will end up at Running Creek. The creek we just were at was that is called Dry Creek. Now we're going to Running Creek, which is a half mile away. And it, it should be a water crossing, I would imagine. It usually is. So I think we're gonna try to eat there. We both kind of lost our, our hunger. We ate those cliff bars a little too soon, but we both needed it. So now we're paying the price of not being quite hungry enough for lunch. But we're gonna, ow, stickeries. Damn it, man. Watch out, babe, those are thorns. So, as I was saying, once we get past that creek, we got about a mile and a half of pretty rough uphill. From last time, that was the part that we hated the most was that uphill. It was pretty brutal-ish. So, we wanna eat first, I think. We're still on the fence on whether we wanna tackle it on a full stomach or empty, but I think full stomach would be, bad, but would be better. So anyhow, that's where we're at now. Oh, we just crossed the dirt road. Now we're on like a, a real wide trail that looks like it used to maybe be a forestry road or something. I don't know, I kind of remember from last time we were here. Seems like we saw some really big birds and trees, like some big black birds or turkey buzzards or something. I don't hear them now though. So we're getting super close to the running creek and it's one of the spots that holds uh, like a big number of camp spots where you can like, you know, if you had a party of 10, you'd probably all have plenty of room to pitch a tent. Although the hammocks, I'm not sure that it's a really good place for hammocks, I honestly don't know. Let's see, there's a, a big old area. I mean, you can put pile in some people. Yeah, it looks like the, the water is fairly down. That means I'll, I'll get a dry creek crossing. That's pretty nice. 
trying out a new trick. My friend Derek, the one that gave me the coffee, also sent me a CNOC bag. And uh, I was a little hesitant because I'm really into the Sawyer Squeeze, but they are super fast to fill with water. And when you're just sitting here chilling, no sense of squeezing at all, just gravity feed that sucker. I've got it hooked to a line, or to a line, to a limb, and it's just doing its work. All we gotta do is watch it. Pretty sweet. <laughs> okay, for today's lunch, got Jim's chili, made in July. Basically a turkey, turkey be, uh, ground turkey and beans and chili starter, dehydrated, it's really good dead water. Angela's going with the... Um, I've got Nomad Nutrition that I got at Pack Rad. It's Irish Shepherd's Pie. It's plant-based, and what's crazy is it's... <coughs> excuse me. It's one serving, and this little bit, I mean, it's like literally that much food. 790 calories. 790 calories? <laughs> <laughs> but with it being plant-based, that's kind of crazy. Like, I'm trying to figure out how the heck they did that, but it's really, really good. Just, huh. I mean, it's a different kind of shepherd's pie, but it's really yummy. Okay. So I would definitely get it again. It's a little expensive, twelve ninety five for this puppy. But yeah, that seems kind of expensive since I made mine for probably like two bucks. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm happy. Cool. Okay. Well, we just ate a lunch, refilled up on water, and we are leaving this gorgeous place and going to go find some hill climbs to we'll climb a mountain. This is the, probably going to be the most strenuous part of this trip, really. When you say it, babe? Yes. You think so. Oh, there's some fish down there. Good. Okay. We are officially starting the uphill grind. It's really not super steep, it's just a mile and a half of uphill and it wears you down. And then when you, you hit your wall, you gotta just keep going. I imagine we'll be taking a few short breaks going up this thing easier than going at a snail's pace and hating it the whole time. Well, it's two o'clock and we're killing that pill. We stopped twice for like two or three minutes each and uh, just killing it. I'm super proud of both of us. We're doing really, this is the part we we're dreading really right now. Not that big a deal. Of course, you know, it's a cool day, and when we did it last time, it was super hot and uh, kind of miserable. Uh, a little more overgrown than it is now, and we're not as conditioned. We're kind of conditioned ourselves in the last six to eight months to handle going uphill. So this is going to be nice going home, knowing that something at one time kind of scared us or gave us... Um, undue stress is no longer a thing. It'll give uh, both of us more confidence to see um, elevation in a different light from here on out. You know, that's something. When you can worry about something and then find out that it's a piece of cake, that's huge for your ego, for your overall well-being, and being able to track, plan a trip and such. So anyhow, I guess there's no reason to filibuster, but... This trail is wonderful. Just a steady uphill. Every once in a while, like right now, it levels off and then starts going back uphill. Uh, at this rate, we're going to be at the top super fast. Uh, I think it was a mile and a half of uphill to the top of the elevation, and uh, we're killing it. So we're about seven and a half miles for the day. Oh, she says there's a snake over here. I almost stepped on it. It's so pretty. Look at Where? It. Look at 
green snake. Oh, it's a green snake. Yeah. A live oh. one this time. Oh, so you are a beautiful creature. I'm so glad I didn't step on you. Oh, you almost did. You stepped right next to it. How beautiful is that? I bet this is the seasonal water cross, or source, I should say. So we're on the downhill slide to Ponca. Oh, here's the cave. No, I'm not going down in there. Not interested in going down there. Can you feel a cool breeze? I bet it's creepy as hell down in there. <laughs> Probably. Human skulls and stuff. Yeah, right. So as I was saying, we're really close to Ponca. It's pretty much at the bottom of this hill. You know, I don't know how many miles, but I don't think it's very many. Like maybe one or two. Do you have any idea? It should be only be about a mile to Ponca, right? Yeah. Down the, in, at the bottom of this hill? I think so. Yeah. So, as we get closer to Ponca, um, to my right is, I believe it's called Leather Creek or Leatherneck Creek or something. And that's, it's in a valley. And that's where, if you were going to go look at Balanced Rock, that's the valley that you take to get to there. And that is absolutely beautiful. We're going to have to go do that one again so I can get it on film. Uh, Angela and I did it as a day hike one time and I didn't get it on video so I'd like to do that at some point it's really beautiful it's a big boulder stuck on the top of a waterfall basically it's hard to describe it's super amazing anyhow yeah, probably the next time unless we see something cool I'll probably see you at the bottom of the hill which is will be Ponte as I said so stay tuned okay well it's 3.20 and we are Super close to Ponca, it's right around this corner. And we're gonna take a break and load up with water and then head to Steel Creek after that, where I will make a trash run and dump some trash in a dumpster. That is awesome. All right. Boxley, 11 miles. Steel Creek, too. Yeah, some shade. We're gonna take a quick break. Oh, might as well take a break where we took a break last time, huh? Yeah. Or do you wanna go up there by, by that thing? No, well, we're taking a nice little break on a culvert on a low water bridge, uh, right across from the real low water bridge. Mm -hmm. And uh, both ate a Snickers. She's cameling up with, I got some water in a water bag right there. And uh, I'm drinking a 750 of Propel to try to get some electrolytes. And then I'm gonna try to slam that and then I'm gonna fill, top it off with water. Um, we're gonna be staying at, at Steel Creek, uh, not the park, but the actual creek itself. There's a, a big camp spot that I saw last time I was through there and uh, I'm hoping it has water. If not, that could be an issue. They had water last time, but every water crossing that wasn't a big water crossing has been pretty dry, so I don't know what to do right now. Might have to carry some water. It's only three miles, I think, on it. So Angela decided, or we decided to go ahead and we're gonna carry that sea knock water full, I think it's two liters. So she uh, volunteered to go get this bag. I went and got the first bag trying to figure out how she can get to it, the good water. You gotta kind of play a, a stepping stone game where you get out there as far as you can. Looks like she's doing it. She's natural. Okay, we're back at it. Leaving Ponca. Headed towards Steel Creek. 
1.8 miles. We're gonna, I'm gonna make a trail run or a trash run. Angela's probably gonna, I'll probably drop my backpack off at the junction and then she'll hang out with the backpacks and I will take a, a quick run down and throw some trash away. We got a, a pretty full Ziploc bag, gallon bag of trash and two one liter smart bottles with the wine was in that we're gonna get rid of. It's not gonna shave a lot of weight off of us, but every little bit helps. So that's where we stand. I'm carrying two extra liters of water right now in the Seenock bladder. That way if Steel Creek is dry, we'll still be able to mix our scotch with some water and be able to cook. So there is that. There's some really good views along Steel Creek on the trail. And we just, we just saw three backpackers, two males, one female, and they're headed to Kyle's Landing, so there's a chance we might catch up to them. If we let them go in front of us, and we're kind of hoping since they're fresh, since they just got here, that they might have a good pace. We'll see. Starting to get some views now. You can see Buffalo River down there. of like crazy rock outcrops like giant pedestals that you can get up on up on and huge views river's not very full right now pretty low Look at that pretty woman. I think I'll go your way. Wow, that's so pretty in Turning into the part of the trip where we'll get some cool rock features. Especially once we get past Steel Creek. But here coming up, there's gonna be some really cool ones. I've been on this trail two or three times now. And there's one particular place that I really love. You'll see it soon. We've been slogging it uphill, so we finally got to a point where we actually got some downhill action. As much as I hate downhills, man, they feel good after a big long uphill. Those really weren't that long of an uphill, but I think you know what I'm saying. If you catch one. Right area.
This is one of the places sometimes when we're on this trail, we take a break. It's pretty neat how the, it's got a little bit of a overhang. Actually, that's the spot right there because we always put our chairs up right there. Of course, back then we didn't have chairs, we had stools, but same difference. You know, we're to the point now where it's almost going to be all downhill. We're basically leaving the mountain so we can get back to the river because that's where Steel Creek is. It's right on the river. So we're going to have a lot of these like switchbacks with rock stairs type situation like this one right here. And that can be sketchy. Especially when it's raining out, which it's not right now. But it's definitely one of these things where you got to pay attention to what you're doing. You can get hurt. Try to give you a better view of what a short Sicilian looks like. When... Short legs go down. <laughs> uh huh. This is how short Sicilians do it. <laughs> we always call these stairmasters. I think I've said that before, but it all started when we came here the first time with Olivia. And we didn't get to Steel Creek until dusk. And we hiked all of this in pitch black because it was super dark. And uh, it's the first time I'd ever encountered anything like this. It was my first serious hike as an adult. And uh, we went all the way to Ponca in the dark. From, from the very beginning to the, setting up our tent, it was black. So imagine doing this, only we were going up. We were going the other direction. So there's a little history lesson for you. We're, gonna, we're doing pretty good on time. It's 20 to 5 right now. And we've got until about 6.30 before it starts getting dark. And we've only got about a, another mile to go, I believe. Does that sound right? A mile? Yeah. A mile. And we are almost to Steel Creek. And then, like I said, we're going to make a super fast trash run. I'll drop my pack and have Angela hang out by it. And I'm going to get rid of some, some trash. We brought extra trash bags just so we can do this. And uh, after this, I don't know where any trash cans are. And this one's really pretty close to the trail. So we really shouldn't lose much more than five or 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go make my trash run. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got a pretty cool story to tell. Last year, well, it, it, it was in March. I'm trying to do it without the sun glaring. Last year in March, when, when we were with Olivia and we did our, the 14 miles to Steel Creek from Boxley, when we got to Ponca, we were really wore out. We were taking a break right where we took a break today at Ponca, right on that little, it's like a covert or a small bridge. And we met this, these people, a lady and a man. And we started talking to him, and the lady was super informative. Sorry about the sun. Let me switch hands. Okay, that's much better. So anyhow, we met this lady and this man, and the guy really wasn't very much of a talker, but the lady was giving us all this great information. She's the reason we learned about permethrin. And uh, I mean, I told her how I got ate up by like, man, there was at least 200 ticks. I'm that's not a joke, and I'm not making it sound like that it that's what it was it was 200 ticks that day we were like the, some of the first people to hike boxley to ponca after the covid uh shut the parks down as soon as they opened the parks down we were ready and we gunned it so anyhow she told she told us check out permethrin she's like i soaked all my i sprayed all my clothes with permethrin and then i was like well what is it do you have to like something you put in your washing machine or i didn't know what it was so she explained it to us but we promptly went out and got some permethrin and it worked like a dream i cannot tell you how good permethrin is if you have not tried it you need to try it it's sold at walmart it's super easy to get anyhow we were talking about her at ponca i was like remember that lady and we kind of gave a talked about it she and her husband or the guy that she was with just passed us on the trail 
course, they didn't recognize us, but we both completely recognized that lady. And wasn't that cool? Was awesome. Yeah. I looked, I turned around after she went by. I turned around at Angela and I was like, that's that lady. And she like totally nodded her head. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that is great. I mean, what are the odds? Hikers, man, they're the coolest people in the world. Next to punk rockers, of course, but that's a different story. I don't know if you can see it, but those are the bluffs, the Steel Creek Bluffs. I was told they're called the Grand Bluffs, but I'm not honestly sure about that. All right, we're kind of keeping up a pretty fast pace right now so we can get to camp and have some slacker time instead of pulling in there right at dark like we did last night. Okay, so <laughs> about a shit. So if you've watched our first BRT video, this is where we stopped the video and I started talking about it. It's cheeseburger time, like Syntex 77 or something. But uh, So that we went that way to get to the car because we parked in the parking lot. But we are going to continue on. So as of now, this is just all new territory for Angela. So I'm pretty stoked for her. I've been about two miles past here. So I won't get to see new territory until tomorrow. But I'm super stoked for Angela right now because she gets to see the trail for the first time. And like I always say, you never forget your first one. Okay, well, we made it to camp. This is a 13.9 camp. There's a real flat area up there that looks like it used to be a road. So we've got our tarps hung. We gathered some wood. Got a fire going. So the last campers left us some nice tinder. It was really nice of them. Um, Angela is cooking. What are you cooking? Uh, chicken risotto. Chicken risotto by who? Pa Backpackers Pantry? Yes. That's nice. I am gonna cook, I am gonna eat some stroganoff that Angela made with the dehydrator. Um, we got some neighbors down there. I can't see their fire anymore. They were over there. Um, they took the first spot, which is a pretty nice spot, but this is also a nice spot. The only thing I can really complain about this spot is it's unlevel, so my chair is a little, un a little sketchy. So here in a minute, I'm gonna move that rock right there and scoot my chair over towards Angela. And uh, that'll get us, get me back on level ground. You can see where I dug all the ash out. I like to have a pit in my, I like to have a fire pit, not just to make it on top. It's just the way I was taught. So I, I dug it out into a pit. I just, I always just put the ash to the side because when it rains, it'll just help turn it to kind of cement and whatever. And really I don't have anywhere else to put it. I'm not gonna scatter because I don't have a bucket. So it is what it is. It is 9.20 in the evening, October 16th. It's Friday. Today we did 10.3 miles. We have been enjoying a fire and it's dwindling and I'm hoping to burn that log in half so I can fold it over. And if I don't, then we will retire. But uh, right now we're just trying to stay warm. Let me go get a temperature real quick. It is 41.7 degrees Ooh, over here. It got colder. But over by the over by the fire, it's nice and toasty. So we're we are golden. I put my Sawyer squeeze in a Ziploc and I put it between the hammock and the underquilt. So it, I don't think it's going to freeze tonight, but just the same precautions. And we will probably see you guys in the morning. So stick with it. Let's check out what happens to day three. We got a big push tomorrow. We have less elevation. We do have some elevation, but we have less elevation than we've seen today. So we're gonna to try to hit 12 if possible. We'll see.